This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. When opening a new piece of software, it's not unusual to feel a little awkward as you try to find your way around. You've got a foreign interface, icons all over the place. It always takes a little time to learn the lay of the land. Well, my guess is you're probably feeling the same way the first time you open 3ds Max. The program certainly has a share of bells and whistles, and frankly the interface and overall layout are a little more intimidating than most other programs. Over the next couple minutes, we're going to see if we can't get you a little more comfortable with how the program is laid out. Getting a grasp on 3ds Max should probably start by first taking a look at the big four squares that make up the majority of the interface. These are referred to as viewports, and they're in essence the windows into your 3D world. The reason there's four of them is because each viewport points in a different direction, which allows you to view your scene from various vantage points in order to best make sense of the 3D world you're working in. So they all show you the same thing, the scene you're building. They just show you that scene each from a different direction. One view shows the scene from straight ahead. One provides a look from over top. One displays the way things would look from the side. And one gives you more of an angled view, which you can rotate around in. To help you keep things straight, which direction is which, you'll find the name of the direction a given viewport points in the upper left-hand corner of that view. In the upper left-hand corner of the interface, you'll find a green button that's called the Application button, or Application Menu. And next to it, a smaller row of icons known as the Quick Access Toolbar. These two collectively provide both quick and easy access to Max's file management commands. Holding your mouse over a particular command opens the various options within that category over in the right-hand column. That column, showing both the name of the command along with a brief description or definition of what the command does directly below the name. If you open the menu using the Alt-F keyboard shortcut, the drop-down will display the associated keyboard shortcuts for the menu choices. For example, O would open a file, while Y would provide you with your Save As options. Simply moving the mouse instead of pressing a key while the letters display will take you back to the regular menu layout. On the Quick Access Toolbar, you'll find commands for creating a new scene, opening an existing project file, saving your work, and both the undo and redo commands. Max also has a standard pull-down menu with commands categorized by topic. If there's a default keyboard shortcut for a given operation, it'll be listed to the right of the command name. Most of the pull-down menus also have arrows that offer additional commands and options that pertain to the particular topic or feature. Directly below the pull-down menus, the row of icons that stretch from left to right is your toolbar. This area provides access to many of your most common tasks, like selecting, moving, and rendering. You can hold your mouse on top of any of the icons to reveal the name of that particular command. If you ever find a small little mark in the lower right-hand corner of an icon, holding down on that icon will display a drop-down flyout containing a list of other commands within that particular menu. Below the toolbar, using the default configuration, you'll find what is known as the Graphite Modeling Ribbon. In the ribbon, you'll find a series of modeling commands which give you quick and easy access to those specific tools. We'll actually be closing this area of the interface when working through this title in order to free up a little more space for our viewports. The column on the far right is referred to as the Command Panel and is an area that you're going to be spending a great deal of time in. The Command Panel consists of six individual columns grouped by function, each column being accessed by simply clicking on its icon. It'll be in the Command Panel where you'll make, modify, and in large part control the objects you've created. Of the various tabs, the two you'll find yourself most often in under normal workflow will be Create, which as the name implies, holds the majority of your creation commands, and the Modify column, which you'll be accessing over and over again when wanting to modify or edit the things you've made. The lower right-hand corner of the interface holds your viewport navigation controls, commands that allow you to control what you see and just exactly how you move around in your viewports. We'll be taking a closer look at those options in an upcoming video. At the bottom of the screen is where you go when you're ready to animate. The area that looks like a ruler is called the timeline, or sometimes the trackbar. The timeline tells you how long your animation is, measured in what are called frames. We'll get more into that in the chapter on animation. 
Above the timeline, you'll find what they call the time slider, which is what you use to move in time, pulling it to the right to go forward and dragging it back to the left to go backwards. To the right of the timeline are your animation playback controls, which work similar to controlling the playback on a DVD. There's buttons to jump to the start and end of your animation, others that move you back and forward one frame at a time, and the actual playback button that you'll use when wanting to view your timeline being played back in its entirety. Lastly, along the far left edge is a new addition to the Max 2013 interface. It's referred to as the Viewport Layout tab, and it gives you the opportunity to save and quickly access a specific viewport configuration that you might enjoy using. The Viewport Layout tab, like the Graphite Modeling Ribbon, will be closed during this title in order to provide a little extra room in our working windows. So that's a quick overview of the 3DS Max 2013 interface. Now, something about your control device, your mouse in other words. Max is without a doubt a three mouse button program. When working, you'll definitely want to make sure that you're using a mouse that incorporates three buttons. You're going to find that Max has specifically been configured to use and take advantage of all three buttons, though the majority of your clicking will be done with the left button. Both the middle wheel and the right mouse button have specialized features and controls that you'll no doubt want to be using during your normal workflow. Now that means you're going to be needing a little extra dexterity and coordination in those fingers of yours as you creatively click your way to your next award-winning animated project.